Hi, my name is Yasmin Rahman and I'm a young adult author. Today I am here to talk to you about my second book, This Is My Truth, which has been chosen for the 2023 Read for Empathy collection, which I'm so honoured to be on. Um, this Is My Truth is a book about two best friends, Huda and Amani, both of whom think the other has the most perfect life, but of course they don't know the full picture. Our focus is on Amani, um, who is hiding a big secret, and her secret is that of, hello, here's my cat. You wanna go across, please? Thanks. <laughs> um, so our focus is on Amani, who is hiding big secret, as I said. Um, her secret is that her father is abusive towards her mother. Um, but it's the end of school and a prank blog has started up um, revealing student secrets. So Amani is now terrified that someone is going to find out her secret. Um, I'm going to read to you um, a little bit from chapter five. I'm woken in the middle of the night by the sound of my door clicking open. In my half asleep state, I of course assume it's a burglar coming to stab me. So I push myself back against my headboard, heart already pounding. But then I hear it, hear the noise that's dominated the nights in our home for so many years now. Apple's deep baritone rumbles up the stairs and through the walls. There's a shadow at the door, Ismail. I guess Abu's good mood er from earlier about my fake upcoming group grades could only last so long. You think it's funny, do you? I hear booming from the living room. Ismail actually quivers as he stands in the doorway. Poor kid, I'd have thought he'd be used to it by now too, but I keep forgetting how young he is. He doesn't ask if he can come into my bed, but he doesn't need to anymore. It's sort of become our ritual on the bad nights. I'm ashamed to say I probably would have slept through this argument if it weren't for Ismail. I put on a reassuring smile and flip down the corner of my duvet as an invitation. He starts to approach, but suddenly stops halfway. Before I can ask him what's wrong, he turns around to go and close the door to close out the shouting. Well, to an extent. You can still hear it, but it's muffled. It's dark in the room now, so our senses are tuned to listen to the noise. You're an idiot! Ismail still hasn't moved from the door, so I grab my phone and touch, turn the torch on so he can use it as a lighthouse to find his way to safety. He shuffles across the carpet and climbs in. I wrap the duvet over us and cuddle him close to me, turning my phone torch off. It's just us in the darkness now, us against the fighting. These rows at night put me on edge. It's like I'm waiting for it to reach boiling point, to hear the sound of Abu's fists on Ammi's face or her body, and I'm just desperately trying to bury Ismail's and my heads in the sand. If we don't hear it, it's not happening. And goodbye from me and my cat, Islam. He says bye. Thanks.